Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock and I'm an artist working in all kinds of mediums and I love to teach at all kinds of levels. So I hope you'll find something interesting here on my channel that'll help you grow as an artist. Today I'm going to be talking about drawing strawberries and I'll be coloring in Olo markers. This will work for other alcohol markers as well, or if you'd like to watercolor your strawberry, stay tuned just for the first section of how to draw a strawberry in perspective. At the very end of the video, I'm gonna have a short part on how to make a small strawberry because not many people have need of making a large realistic strawberry, but you might have need for a little strawberry here and there, and I'll give you some tips on doing that in several different mediums. Let's get going. I'm going to begin by drawing the strawberry in perspective. And even though it's a strawberry, it's not a building with straight sides on it, it has perspective. It may not necessarily, in this particular instance, have vanishing points and that sort of thing, but the kinds of lines that I'm going to be making are going to indicate perspective because I wanted to create perspective using the seeds on the outside of the strawberry. And I'm doing that by a cross contour drawing. Cross contour is when you're indicating the volume of a shape by tracing the lines around that, that physical shape. So when the area gets closer to you, like that front right side of the strawberry, then the lines get further apart. And when you get to the bottom or to the back of the strawberry, that's away from you further. It's moving away from you as opposed to closer to you. So those lines get closer together. And I'm making these in what would be an X shape. If you had the strawberry sitting straight up and facing straight at you, they would be in about an X, not a, you know, kind of a perpendicular grid with a plus minus. So they don't go around that direction. I studied a lot of strawberries to figure out what the pattern is for the, the little pockets for the seeds that go on the outside, because it's kind of important to get those looking like a real strawberry. So on each one of the intersections of those crisscross lines, I'm sketching in a circle for the pockets. Because each one of those seeds kind of sets into the skin of the strawberry itself in that little pocket. We're not gonna need to leave all these lines in here, so don't worry about that. We're gonna get rid of a bunch of it. But I wanted to be able to have all of those seeds in some sort of fashion that's going to look strawberry-ish. A lot of people will just draw random seeds everywhere, but there are about 200 seeds on any like average type of size of strawberry. And it's not just like, you know, stick 12 of them on there and you're good unless you're just doing a quick indication of the seeds. And the seeds are actually, the technical name for them is Achenes, from what I can tell on the internet. <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce that, but each Achene is then inside one of these circles. When it's a circle that's closest to you, then it's in the center of that circle. And as it gets further away from you, it's either at the top end or the bottom end of that circle because those circles are even in perspective. But at this point, I'm just putting the little marks in there so that I have an indication in the rest of my drawing where I'm going to put the strawberry seeds, those little, little achenes. So I'm going to get rid of, after drawing those in with a pen, I'm going to get rid of all of those pencil lines because I don't need all that stuff inside because now it's time to color the strawberry. And I decided the better part of Valor is to pick some colors to work on with the strawberry. The picture that I was working on, which I can't reference here for you because it was from a stock site. So I picked some pinks that are going to be for the highlight portions because there's some highlights on here that are on the cooler side. The rest of those reds in the Olo marker collection are going to be used. There's going to be some darker ones in here. And I started with creating a base tone for the entire strawberry. Just putting color across the whole thing. There's some areas in the photo that I was working from that are more orangey and there's some that are more yellowy and then there's some pure red portions. But I just wanted to get the base of this sketched in here. Don't worry about 
leaving room for all of those little Akanis. We're going to be able to add those back in. And I'm just going to build up the shading around it. There's some areas in the center of the strawberry. I was just looking at it for pure value going across the entire photo that I was working from and then erased all the excess pencil lines so I could continue adding a lot more depth into this. Now I wanted to add depth into the Akane's pockets. And so here you can see I've got my little lines there and I'm putting the ones here toward the back side as it starts flipping to the back of the strawberry. The seed is going to be in the bottom portion of the circle because you're going to see more of the back side than the front side. And those Akane's pockets, those little circles, when you get to, to those outside portions, remember we were talking about perspective, as we get to the outside of the strawberry, they're going to get flatter. In the center portion, the fattest portion of the strawberry, the biggest portion that's closest to you, you'll end up with the roundest pockets. And they just kind of morph in size and shape as they go around the strawberry. So I'm going to start as I get out to the outside, making them kind of skinnier and more like ovals than actual round types of pockets. And you don't really have to leave the seeds being white. They, they can be another color because I'm going to add in some white pen in this because I finally gave up and I just wanted a little bit more sparkle on it than I was getting. But I did have that white highlight in the middle. That's all a cool pink. Remember that because we're going to try to save most of that, but I'm going to actually add more to it. It's still going to feel like a white highlight. There's a lot of people that will take something like a piece of fruit and they try to make a white highlight on it or they draw hair with white highlights on it. And generally there's a tone to that white highlight. And that's what I'm going to be indicating here is the, the pinkish tone that is in this bright highlight. Now, as you move away from the highlight area, there's going to be area, sections around some of the other pockets that are going to have just a little line of highlight around them. So you're gonna get interesting shapes. It's really helpful to find a good photograph of a strawberry and that's where I, I turned to a stock website because I couldn't find one that was really well lit that had clearly defined highlights and would show me enough of the detail that I could really get into the, the fine detail in the strawberry. I'm also using a whole bunch of reds, as you can tell, just a myriad of different red colors. You can do this with your own marker collection as, as you desire. And I'm just basically working into the strawberry over and over again, darkening some areas and trying to trying to get the values correct for the pockets. And as I started moving out from the, the lighter part in the middle, I started working with darker colors as it got into the shadow areas. Because there was from the table, some bounce light that was coming back up onto the strawberry. So there was a, a, like an orangey yellow highlight, not right at the bottom, but a little bit higher than the bottom, right where the strawberry touched the table. It was very dark. But those pockets also had a whole lot more color in them. And again, they're going to be darker pockets when they're in shadow and lighter in the lighter areas. Now that I had the pockets all set, I decided to lighten the Akanis. And I'm using just a white gel pen to do that. And white gel pen is generally best used on top of alcohol marker rather than used with alcohol marker on top. But in this particular case, I don't want all of these Akanis or seeds to be white. They're not really white. They're a brown color in reality. They just look lighter or whiter because they're actually on something that's really dark and red. But I'm going to let them dry while I'm working on the leaves because I wanted that pigment that's in the gel pen to be really dry before going over it because I wanted to change the tone on them and I, I just didn't want to do it while it was super wet because then you could ruin the marker nibs. So you can use alcohol marker nibs on top of other surfaces. Just be really careful. Be ready to like have some scratch paper handy to scribble off if you end up getting too much of whatever pigment underneath. So if you're trying to use it on top of 
watercolor or on top of another type of pen or something, then be real careful with that. So now that all of that was dry, I could knock back the color of the Akanis simply by going over them with a darker color, using a much darker color in the bottom section and a lighter color in the highlight sections, so that that also helps to indicate the roundness of the object, the roundness of the berry, because even those are consistent with the highlights and shadows. I did decide to put a little more of that pink into the white highlight. It still reads as a white highlight, but it was just too bright, too contrasty. So all that's left is to create a shadow underneath. And in this particular case, I decided to use the red gray colors. Red gray is one color that's common only to the, as far as I know, to the Olo markers. It's a redder gray, that warm gray next to it looks yellowish, but here it's got a little more of a red tone to it. I thought that would be helpful with the strawberry reflecting onto the surface of the table. I promised I'd show you some easier and smaller strawberries, but I wanted to make them something that will still feel realistic. So they're going to be more loosey and goosey and artistic representations of strawberries, as opposed to here's how you make an absolutely totally realistic strawberry small. Because if you want something quick to drop a strawberry into a wreath or into a still life or something, you might want something a little bit looser. So I'm gonna start on this watercolor paper. Yes, I'm working on watercolor paper with alcohol markers. And I'm gonna start with my lightest of my red choices. So pull out your red markers. And I'm just gonna leave some random shapes on the highlight side. And then a little bit over on the shadow side, just so there's some room to play. You can always cover up more of this. So leave more of these little spots than you think you need because you can just go in with darker colors on the right hand side to build up some, some shadows, but you can also start to cover up some of those white spots so you don't look like you have, you know, a freck, freckled type of strawberry necessarily. You want them to feel like these are actually, you know, the, the Akanis on the strawberry. And then as you get to the end, you start feeling more comfortable, just cover up some of that. And when you do the light color over your other layers, it'll look like you have lighter Akanis on one side than the other and then give it some leaves with a little bit of dimension and depth to them. You can even use some red if you need to make your green a little bit darker. And you can reference the video on Tuesday this week, I guess it was, when I talked about using complementary colors to do shading. Now this one is water-based markers and it's much easier. I'm keeping it much simpler, just very simple shapes create your basic strawberry and leave one area that's gonna have one really strong, nice, bright highlight. Make it very irregular so that it's just a very loose shape. Give yourself some very loose leaves, really, really simple. And if you have other colors, depending on your marker set, you can add another color into the green. I didn't have a really dark red, so I'm using a green to create some dark red here on the side of my strawberry to give it just a slight bit of dimension at the bottom. I did get some red on my green marker, so my little swatch down there is off in color, but then add water to all of it and get it good and dry before the final step, because this is one that I know lots of you love doing pen and ink along with watercolor or watercolor marker. And I'm actually letting the strawberry lines, the outlines, just be kitty wumpus. Let them come outside of the edges of the strawberry itself and let it feel like a very loose kind of strawberry and then just draw the Akanis in black pen. Now the Akanis do go black as the strawberry gets more and more ripe. So you need to eat the strawberry if the Akanis start turning black, just so you know. And the third one is gonna be traditional watercolor. Another you know very simple type of technique draw your strawberry shape and give yourself the, the nice outline to it. And then you're going to leave some very specific kinds of openings in it. I left a little highlight on the left side. You can leave it on the right side or, you know, just a small highlight elsewhere and then get real scrubby with your brush. If you can do some dry brush, great, but you can just leave kind of a wishy-washy spot in the middle and add in a little bit darker color, just a slight bit around a couple spots so you get 
a little bit of dimension on it. And while that's drying, then you want to hang on just a minute. Don't put the Aconies in yet. But here I'm just kind of messing around with shrinking some of my white spots. And while, it, while it's drying, I'm going to entertain myself with putting my swatches of color down there so that I end up with something that uh, doesn't end up being a total mush mess in my strawberry. I'll add my greens on the top, the leaves on the top, even though the strawberry is still wet because I'm going to let some of that color merge in where the two of them are together to add some dark to it without risking it merging into the red. Make sure it's really thick when you drop that green in for the shadow portion and use a little thicker paint while the red is still wet, a little thicker red in order to make the Aconies look very soft because if the paint is still damp, then you'll get some soft edges, but you could wait until it's completely dry in order to make some hard edge ones. So I'm going to label these so I remember what I did in my sketchbook. I will list the colors, the individual colors over on my blog if you need those. But for the most part, just find colors like these in your collection of whatever medium you're using. If you missed it, I have been doing berries all week. And yesterday I did a short here on YouTube with this card in it. And on Tuesday, I drew holly and berries. And I was talking about color mixing in that. So you might be interested in that one. I'll put links to both of those in the doobly-doo. And that is it. I enjoyed making strawberries with you today. And I hope that maybe you'll go and do some yourself. So let me know if you do. Tag me or join the Art Venture community and share your strawberries over there. And I'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>